Well, there was an approach, actually, where um, um, Jason and uh, Craig came, came to my house in London. I invited them to my house to get some idea um, of, of, of what it was that they planned. And they had, a, they had like a floor plan of how they wanted to display things. And they said, do you approach the gallery through Greco-Roman statues? And then the first thing you see is Chuck Berry's guitar. I said, what, the original one, the blonde one? They said, yes. I said, what would, you, what would you like? Just tell me what you want to help this along and you can have whatever it is that you want. So I ended up, um, as you say, there's quite a bit here. There's seven guitars and there's um, a, c a couple of costumes and some um, uh, ampli amplification. So, yes, yeah, it's, it's quite, a, there's, 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 it, it goes right across the board as far as um, my history as a guitarist almost. that goes through from the Yardbirds to the first album of Led Zeppelin. Well, um, I, I've loaned my harmony guitar, which was a harmony six-string acoustic. And it looks very similar to most acoustics that there were. It just happens to be a harmony as opposed to a Gibson or a Martin. Um, and that that guitar I, I, I had way back in the early 60s, and it, it, it was with me all the way through to the point that I used it as a writing tool. When I was in the Yardbirds, I wrote songs on it, because the thing is, it's not the sort of thing where you would go home and set up a, a huge amplification system just to play a few riffs. To explore the guitar and the writing process, I would do it on the acoustic most of the time. That's not all the time, but most of the time. And that, that particular guitar is, the, it, it, it is a vehicle whereby the first album of Led Zeppelin is written, the second album is written, the third album is written, and the fourth album is written. And uh, it's the guitar that actually culminates on playing uh, Stairway to Heaven. After that, after that album and the intervention of the double neck was a new thing, I actually then bought a Martin guitar at that point, but that was after the fourth album in time for the fifth album, really. Well, um, I'm a drummer, so I'm going to focus on a drum set that is really uh, dear to me, which is the um, Ludwig drum set at the very beginning of the, of the exhibition. That was Ringo Starr's first Ludwig American drum set. He bought it, I think it was in 63, and used it for a while um, in Britain before the Beatles came. Um, but it was his earliest American set that he was very proud of. So I think that is an icon, and I think everyone's going to love seeing that. We have several um, of the primary composing instruments for some of rock and roll's uh, most important artists. Um, Jimmy Page was talking about the Harmony Sovereign, um, which he used to compose nearly every Led Zeppelin song. And we have equivalents of that with other musicians. Don Everly, um, Keith Richards, Bruce Springsteen. So we have um, the signature guitar of a lot of rock and roll's most important artists. And they're all here together. A lot of artists, musicians, were also uh, painters, and they get, you know, might be decorated. The Romans and the Egyptians, you know, I just couldn't help think about the decadence of those eras. It's a honor that 50 years later, this guitar will be hanging in the Play It Loud uh, exhibit. So. Can you just look the other way? <laughs> Thank you. 
program to receive. You can check out any time you like, but you can never.